particular developer focused tool and just see how far I can get. You can find more about me at christianchiller.com. I do have the little, uh, uh, oh, it's that way. <laughs> I do have the little um, chinchilla in the corner this time. You probably can't really read the website, but christianchiller.com. Sign the mailing list there and you will get some free stickers, actually. I could even show you what they look like. Hang on, give me a second. I have some here. I haven't given them out for a while because I usually gave them out at events and obviously there haven't been that many events. But here's a slightly dirty one. There we go. There we go. Focus. Brilliant. You can stick that on your laptop. Lovely. So join my mailing list and I will send you one of those. Um, this episode, I am going to be looking at Nengo. So let's uh, switch views. Here we go. So Nengo, I interviewed uh, Peter Summer of Applied Brain. Oh dear, that's a hard word to say. Of Applied Brain Research um, about a month or so ago. Uh, actually, no longer ago than that. And uh, we had a really interesting chat. You can go back and have a look on the podcast. In fact, I will show you that now. Uh, I've been taking a tiny break from the podcast whilst I experiment with video. I'm still learning video as well. If you haven't been able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> Grasping with Open Broadcast Studio and many other things. Lots to do with video. Where is it? There it is. Um, a little while back. Interview there. ChristianChiller.com slash podcast. Peter Summer. Um, and we had a really good chat, actually. And so I have for some time been wanting to try the tool that we spoke a lot, quite a lot about. And um, see how well I could get on with it. Uh, I am not a... Um, make my terminal a bit bigger. Oops, maybe that's a bit too big. I am not a data scientist. I am not an AI expert. So there's probably going to be a lot of terms here that uh, <laughs> I don't really understand, and it's not necessarily the fault of um, of Ningo, I guess, is probably what I want to say here. But we'll see how far I can get. Now, is that clear enough? I think so. Good. All right. Brilliant. Now, let's have a look. So, this is the uh, product page on Ningo, on, apply, on Applied Brain Research for Ningo. A complete brain maker. As you develop and run models with deep learning, online learning, static weights, simple linear neurons, complex spiking neurons, and everything in between. I hope at least some of you understand what this means. Uh, you can use Ningo to implement pretty much anything. DNN, CNNs. Attractor networks, adaptive motor controllers, slam networks, cognitive systems, you name it. I'm already feeling out of my depth, but I can see how it can go. And actually, this, this particular paragraph here is something that we spoke about quite a lot. Um, typically, it runs on um, specific hardware. I'm going to be emulating it, of course, on my Mac here. So it's not going to be running as performantly as it could be. I don't think performantly is a word, but it will do for now. All right, so let's have a look. There's some example mod models. It's on GitHub. Let's just go to try it free. Nice and bright and colorful so far. Spiking nutrition on spiking model, fully scriptable or GUI based development, highly customizable, use latest hardware. It looks like some sort of uh, Python based notebook. Um, okay, great. Let's get started with Ningo. So we're going to need to install something. I'm just wondering how visible. Give me a second. I'm wondering if I should actually uh, increase the font size there as well. That's better. That looks a bit better, I think. Okay, good. Um, so it's Python, unsurprisingly. Good old pip. That's how I hope that my um, Python setup is working. I had some breakages recently. I've been customizing my uh, terminal a little bit here, you can see. I've actually switched to using, um, I can't remember what it's called now, great, uh, Shadow Maker, something like that for the theme. Um, and I have installed a few new tools. Actually, one I really like is uh, HTOP, which a lot of you might think that's not new particularly, but I quite like it. Good for keeping an eye on what's going on. Anyway, I digress. Uh, that didn't take very long. Um, to make sure, and I've also got uh, success as the koala and failure is the screen face. I'm not sure why that's, oh, because I exited. Okay, make sure the installation worked. Run Ningo. Sounds good so far. Okay. All right. 
right. Looks good so far. Seems to be working. Now we're going to need um, three views now by the looks of it. So I'm going to pop this out. This file path is interesting. Um, okay, and with my terminal gone, I'm going to bring that down the bottom using mosaic as I always do. It's not very visible, is it? Myself and the chinchilla are in the way. <laughs> um, let's see if we need it. We'll come back to that in a minute. Okay. If you don't have pip installed, we do have pip installed. That's great. Okay, once you have it installed, there are two ways to run Nengo models. They can be run either with a GUI or with a Python interpreter. I am not much of a Python programmer, so let's stick with the GUI. Access to GUI, you can use a web browser. Well, it's already opened it for us. I mean, it's telling us something. It's actually been quite helpful so far. Depiction of the network on the left panel. Yep. And the code on the right. I guess there is not much going on right now. This one here looks crazy. <laughs> we'll see if we get anything like that. Is this an image? It's an image. I was wondering if it might be embedded. Network Illustrator on the left panel is interactive. You can drag to move the network objects. So we can. Okay. I mean, there's obviously not much to do here, but yeah. Um, scroll in and out. Yeah. And right click to display plots that will update in real time. Huh. Okay. Hope this is all meaning something to somebody. It looks very good so far. Uh, and look at the GUI documentation for more details. The code editor on the right shows the Python code kind of defining the Ningo model. While you can write any Python code in this editor, we add a few additional constraints to ensure the GUI runs smoothly. Top level network must be called model, which we can see up here. Again, I'm going to increase the font size here, I think. This could ruin the layout ever so slightly. I might make that a little bit smaller. There we go. Okay. All right. Still not sure if you can really see that. Uh, shame there's no way to. Oh, hang on. Haha. -ha. They actually have their own one. Brilliant. Look at that. I'm liking this so far. Some good developer experience so far. Python world always does. Make that just a tiny bit bigger. I think that's looking good now. See the code's getting cut off slightly. But what's this button here? We have uh, open code editor. Okay, all right, fair enough. Good, where were we? Back over here. Top level network must be called a model. We have that. You cannot construct a simulator object as the GUI makes its own simulator. Okay, I'm guessing that means something to Python people maybe. You cannot show plots created with map. Okay, all right, fine. Um, that would get a bit uh, meta, I suppose. To access a series of tutorials that introduce you to the GUI and the basics of building models, click on the folder icon at the top left of the GUI. So it's built-in examples. Okay. Um, maybe we'll do that then. This is just basically going to the next step. So let's do that. Let's. I do like interactive tools. We can probably then get rid of this window as well, which would be good. So click on the folder icon on the top left of the GUI. Excellent. Uh, built-in examples and tutorials. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, intro, I guess. Okay, I think this is basically what we have already. I think I said there was code wrapping. <laughs> but what we can do is uh, bring this. There we go. It actually reminds me a little bit of a tool I worked on myself. Um, I don't think this is going to take very long. They've got some good experience here, so I'm going to go off on some tangents. Uh, this was uh, some work I did with the Ethereum Foundation for learning uh, Solidity and building Web3 applications. Yeah, we have something quite similar here. Um, let's go for Hello World. It's quite a popular thing to do these days, I suppose. I'm quite a fan of them, actually. <laughs> good old OBS is uh, killing my CPU, as always. Yes, you can see there. Yikes. But yeah, same sort of uh, principle. Um, change the code, preview on the other side. Quite a nice idea. Anyway, back to Ningo. Okay, um, so I like this. The uh, the explanatory content is in the comments. This is, this is very good. Um, a bit more of a background. Sequence of tutorials. You can go to the next tutorial. Can you open a file? Okay. 
in the script. The Ningo interface shows the script that defines the model here on the right side of the screen and a graphical depiction of the model on the left side. If you press the play button, the simulator will start. You can move the slider to adjust the input to the neurons and see the spiking activity of the neurons change. Okay. Building. And we can see some things happening here. Uh oh, file not found. Okay, doesn't seems okay there. Okay, <laughs> this will look great. I really throw myself in the deep end here because I really don't know what any of this means, but it looks good and it works. <laughs> so, to be honest with you, that is still more than many of the projects I've looked at so far. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, I'm also seeing my camera is starting to get a bit jumpy. Oops. Seems to be more of an OBS thing. Maybe it'll come good. We'll see. We'll see. Um, okay. All right. So I guess I could play around with some of this. This is always a nice thing with Python. Okay. I don't really know what I'm doing. No, it doesn't like that. <laughs> Okay, all right. What did I change? Oops. Okay. Neurons, okay. All right, good. That was pretty easy and straightforward first. Let's go to the next one. Um, tutorial. One neuron. Brilliant. Okay, here we show one single neuron. Slider on the left adjusts the input to that neuron. So this is emulating our, our brain interface, as, as was mentioned. Um, top graph which has a voltage in the neuron. When that voltage is high enough, the neuron spikes, producing an output middle graph. The output releases a neurotransmitter, which is gradually reabsorbed. Given that the neurotransmitter output, it is difficult to reconstruct the original input. You can adjust the amount of time shown on the graphs by dragging the left side of the gray bar inside the timeline at the bottom of the screen. Okay, good. The left side of the the left side of the gray bar inside the timeline. Ah, uh, okay. So that gives us, yeah, okay. Huh. Interesting. The left side of the grey part inside the timeline. Ah, here we go. Oops, no, maybe not. No. Ah, maybe it means the box. I think I could... I saw it pop up for a sec. There it is. There we go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Okay, excellent. So this is mostly simulation stuff. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Well, this seems to be mostly working. I think we'll do one more here, and then we'll try it coding it in our own uh, interpreter, maybe, because these are mostly all working. We haven't had any problems. This has actually been very smooth sailing so far. It's only been the easiest one to do so far. <laughs> and it's probably the most complicated application, and I don't even really know what it's doing, but <laughs> it seems to be working, so that's great. Two neurons, okay. Now we show what happens with two neurons. Notice that neurons respond very differently to the two inputs. One neuron responds more strongly to positive values, while the other responds more to negative values. This is typical of real neurons, on and off neurons, okay. Given these two neurons, more information is available about what the input is. The bottom graph shows the decoded value down here uh, by taking the output of both neurons and combining them. Notice that these two neurons do a slightly better job of representing the input than one neuron. I will also say this is all very well written so far as well. I, it's very, very well done. Very pleased. Um, okay, so I guess we do a similar thing. Yeah. Decoded value taking the output of both and combining them. Okay. Ah, I see. Up here, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, the bottom graph, oh, the graph here. Ah, okay, right, right. So this is running all the time. 
and this is compile. Okay, cool. Okay, this is pretty much working. So what I'm going to suggest now is we try it in the interpreter. So let's stop this with an interpreter written in Python to Domingo. You likely also need a Python distribution, which we have. Um, it's using Jupyter. Okay, so I'm guessing this is some sort of version of Jupyter, maybe, uh, which would explain a lot of the heavy lifting being done. Um, okay, so, all right, let's try this. I'll pop that up here. Let's, uh, do this. Oops. Uh, there we go. <laughs> there we go, good. Okay, so we open up Python. Seven seven import Domingo model equals Domingo dot network. That'd be pretty similar, I think. Okay. And we can also do plotting with other libraries, as it says here, as we can't do with the hosted version. Jupyter Notebook. Downloading. So if we download this. I'll put it into my download. I should actually probably. I just realized <laughs> I'm not in a very helpful... Uh, Downloading it, you can. Okay. Am I typing it here? Oh no, it's at the. Ah, I probably need to do this. Okay. Requires a few more steps. Do I have Jupiter? I don't think I have Jupiter installed. <laughs> 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 I think we have found one tiny flaw that they didn't uh, mention is an assumption that you have Jupyter installed. But to be fair, if you're in this kind of territory, you probably do. So the one little flaw there, I will probably say, will um, will allow out of that. Um, I guess I want notebook. Or I don't know. I'm not sure what I want, actually. Uh, Jupyter Lab. I don't think that's what I want. Maybe I want notebook. I have. You saw I have done it before. Uh, isn't that where I just was? That's where I just was, isn't it? Hmm. I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay. This isn't. This is more Jupyter's issues than Ningo's issues. <laughs> Oh, hello. That's a lot of <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch. Cool. Taking a while. <laughs> Anything I could talk about in the meantime. Maybe I should fix my camera. Oh, it seems to be better now. It's taking a little while. Um, I might. Uh, I bet you just as I go and start looking at something, it'll it'll have finished. But uh, let's see. Yeah, I actually was interested in looking more into the documentation. And there's a lot of modeling code there. Coming, no, it's still going. Um, I'm interested to know what it means by downloading and stuff. Maybe like this. I clicked on. Okay. Why is it uninstalling things? Strange. Okay. All right, still going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's maybe uh, remind ourselves of a few concepts whilst that's still installing. Okay. It is a brain maker. De testing, deploying neural networks. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> it's taking longer than Docker normally does. I hope something's happening here. 
seems to have just um, paused. Ah, here we go. All right. Okay. Now, I hope I've actually inst installed the right thing. I did. Okay. I think I can. I'm going to do what it says. It looks like I have been here before. Just give me a look. Okay. Something's happening. Good. And then I'm going to get it into. Oh, damn it. Okay. There we go. That's what I wanted. I'm guessing it will look somewhat similar ish. No, not quite. Okay, here we go. So I put it into downloads. Uh, I hope I can go to downloads. Uh, that's strange. Hmm. Whereas I will. Oh no. Where am I? Ah. This is very confusing seeing it this way. Where am I? <laughs> no, I am still in my workspace folder. I will just uh, move the, the folder there. Give me a second. Doing this off camera. Where is it? Uh, okay, why can I not see it? Uh, am I going mad? <laughs> Where did I download that file to? I definitely downloaded it. To, oh, no file. Failed. No file. Interesting. Have we hit our first bug? Page not found. Ooh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. There it is. Strange. That was. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's. There we go. That's why I couldn't find it. Not my fault. Okay. Uh, yep, let's save that into Workspace then. Uh -huh. um, I guess this is Refresh. That should be in here somewhere, I hope. That's text. Oh. Dang, hang on. Um, let's just fix that. Everything was going so well. So far, the only problems have been caused by me, so that's a good sign, I guess. All right. Let's refresh that again. And we should. No, it's still. Hmm. Okay. Let's do a browser refresh. Let's try it the old fashioned way. Still text. Okay. What's going on? Okay, just Mac OS being slightly annoying. There we go. Okay. There we go. So I'm guessing we get a fairly similar experience. Uh, ah, okay, this is nice. Yeah, this is why Jupyter Notebooks are really nice. Uh, run the example. So, demo shows you how to construct and manipulate a single leaky integrate and fire alive neuron. The alive neuron is a simple standard neuron model, and it here it resides inside a unit population, even though there's only one neuron. Okay, so we have the various imports. A lot of this is new, but we also have the Nengo stuff here. Create the neuron. I have to remember, remind myself how to. Uh, <laughs> How to uh, how to use uh, Jupiter? Um, create the neuron. Okay. Provide input. Okay. Connect to it. And probes run the model. Okay. I'm guessing we're going to see. Uh oh. Ah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have that installed. So. <laughs> okay. Let's stop that. It's all going to be worth it. <laughs> uh, numpy. I mean, I don't do much Python, as I already said. So, um, I get a feeling this is going to take a while. <laughs> 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 it's taking us longer to wait for things. Okay. In the meantime, let's go back to the documentation, which is having a look around. 
So it has an overview of, and are all these links or is it just an image? No, it's just an image. Um, getting started. So it takes us to the documentation for each section, the GUI. Uh, it has uh, a, a DL for TensorFlow, add-ons. I mean, this is very well thought through. I'd be interested to get feedback from um, from anyone who is more familiar with this world, actually, to see if it does lead up to live up to my complete lack of knowledge uh, experience with it so far. Okay. So we have NumPy, we saw that. So let's run that again. Something is happening, I think. Ah, I see, right. Oh. Okay. Jupyter is very nice. I should really use it more for documentation stuff. I know some people have. I should actually think about that a bit more. Uh, okay, and then the final one. Plot the results. There we go. Okay, so it's kind of what we were seeing live, but we have it, um, yeah. And I'm guessing we could, if we wanted to, change some kind of arbitrary value. Uh, <laughs> I'm literally just uh, clutching at straws here. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure this is just... Yeah, it's more of the graph than Nengo. This is what we want here, really. Uh, for example. Mm -hmm. And we get different results. So that's basically it. I mean, obviously this is a very, very deep and complicated um, project. Uh, I would be interested, I mean, if we look at things like the, um, it'd be interesting actually just to quickly dive into some of these, seeing as this took very little time. I said, usually say 40 minutes to an hour, I think we're only about half an hour. Um, okay, yeah, this is already what we've covered. Um, next steps, there's a front end and a back end API. Uh, here we go, so that's interesting. Could have maybe done with this earlier, maybe. Uh, this is something I would probably look at myself. Publications, okay, interesting. And I was interested in seeing the, okay. Maybe I should have read this first. There's some problem with going in uh, just uh, wild, I should say. Um, that's the GUI. I suppose there's not too much documentation there. Mostly, yeah, mentioned here. And the DL. I mean, this is taking things to another level, I guess. Um, deep learning integration. So integrating with TensorFlow using Nengo as an input. It'd be very interesting to try that. I have experimented with TensorFlow in the past, but I didn't get massively far. This is not my world, as I already alluded to. But I was interested to experiment. Okay. Great, um, and some publications here. I mean, there's, there's quite a lot here, I suppose. So, um, yeah. All right, well, I will stop um, probably coming across as a complete idiot because I don't really know what I'm doing here. But looking at the basic developer experience, it works. We had no problems. The only problems we had were with installing Python dependencies. Um, and um, it actually has been pretty simple to get started. I think that is the Python world. Python world especially is always very um, uh, very uh, careful about keeping an eye on this sort of thing. Uh, and I'm very pleased that it was so easy to, to get started with something that is inherently quite complicated. Obviously, we'd have to go a lot uh, deeper to get into the full user experience there. Um, but um, as you can see, if you're interested in uh, looking at some more, if this uh, wet your appetite and you do know what this is all about, look at Nengo, N-E-N-G-O dot A-I. Um, and it's open source. Uh, as you can see, there's lots you can do here. I would really love to hear from people hooking it up to uh, some hardware. I think it mentions uh, some of the hardware. They have an active forum. Let's see how true that is. Everything so far has been pretty uh, honest and true. So let's see. Um, yeah, it looks pretty active. <laughs> so, <laughs> excellent.
Um, go back and have a listen to that interview I did with Peter, where he gives things a little bit more of a higher level overview as well. And um, that was me for this uh, this um, DX teardown. Quite a straightforward one, actually. In fact, out of the three we've done so far, this was the most straightforward. We actually got things to work. See previous uh, installments for that not always being the case. In fact, this out of three episodes, this is the only one we got things to work. So, well done. You can, oh, uh, where's the chinchilla? There's the chinchilla. Oh, there we go. <laughs> You could find more about me at christianchiller.com. Fill in my mailing list for a sticker. I'll send you a sticker. You can also sign up to my newsletter there. Currently also a little bit on hiatus whilst I rejig what I do with a podcast, newsletter, these new videos and things like that. But you could still find my latest blog posts there. Um, and uh, you could talk to me on Twitter at Chris Chinch, many other places. And um, until the next installment, next week, whatever you build, make it usable.